Dr. Sage here. Today, we're going to discuss the cell. All right, so we spend a chapter talking about the cell. Why? Because you're learning about biology, the study of living things, and it turns out that all living things are built out as cells. So we need to learn about the cell. Now, although we want to be able to learn about and study the cell, cells are very small. In fact, cells are so small, you can't see them with your naked eyes. So, how can we see a cell? How can we study it if we can't see it with our eyes? Well, one way is to use a microscope to study cells. So we're going to begin with a brief introduction about microscopes. Okay, so to begin discussing microscopes, first there's different types of microscopes that you might use. One type of microscope that you might use is called a light microscope. Now, in a light microscope, essentially what happens is light is going to come up from the bottom of the microscope, it's going to pass through your cells, and then pass through a series of glass lenses on its way to your eyes. And that series of glass lenses is going to magnify the image and make it appear larger than it really is. So the glass is going to bend or refract the light, much like if you wear glasses, the way the glasses bend the light as it's coming into your eyes. Light microscopes can magnify things up to a thousand fold. In other words, they can make something look up to a thousand times bigger than it really is. And then that's the limit of a light microscope. Now, if we're learning about microscopes, there's some terms that go along with microscopes. The first term is the most obvious term, and that's magnification. Magnification is an object's apparent size compared to its real size. Or in simpler terms, when you magnify something, you make it look bigger than it really is. The next one is resolution. One way of defining resolution is essentially how crisp and clear is the image versus like blurry. Okay, there is a more technical definition of resolution. Another definition of resolution is resolution is the minimum distance you need between two points to be able to distinguish them as two separate points. For example, if I draw two dots on here, okay, everyone can see right now that those are two separate dots. But if I draw them much closer together, okay, like there, um, depending on how far you, away you are from your screen, you might not be able to see that as two separate dots. It might actually look at like one dot, but there is space between the two. It is actually two separate dots. But if you hold the screen far enough away from you, your eyes might not have the resolution to be able to distinguish them as two separate dots. Okay, the third term, is contrast. And contrast is the visible differences in the parts of the sample. Much like if you adjust the contrast on your computer monitor. Okay, it makes the brights brighter, the darks darker. The bigger difference between brights and darks, that's contrast. Now, what do we use a light microscope for? We use a light microscope to see things that are too small to see with our eyes. For example, cells. Okay, so with a light microscope, you can very easily see things like animal cells and plant cells, which are eukaryotic cells, something we'll discuss in a few minutes. You can also see some of the things inside cells, like for example, the nucleus is very easy to see inside a cell, or the mitochondria. You can also see different types of cells, for example, bacteria, which are another type of cell called a prokaryotic cell. Again, we'll discuss in a few minutes. You can see those with a light microscope. Now, bacteria are very small, but you can see them with a light microscope. But there are other things that are too small for you to be able to see with a light microscope. For example, a virus. Okay, a virus is so small you can't see it with a light microscope. But let's say you do want to study a virus. You want to be able to examine it and look at it. Okay, in that case, you might be able to use a different type of microscope called an electron microscope, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. Okay, but these are some examples of things you might be able to see with a light microscope. Now, there's lots of different types of light microscopes and there's different techniques you can use with light microscopes. They start from, you know, something very basic like a dissecting microscope. For example, um, this much younger Dr. Sage you can see over there, uh, he's on a dissecting microscope. And that's where you can look at things like, for example, in this image I took here of the eyes of Drosophila melanogaster or fruit flies. Okay, so you can use a, a basic light microscope like that, or you can use a much fancy or more expensive light microscope that can do a technique called fluorescent in situ hybridization. Um, and you can get images, for example, of these chromosomes here, which are chromosomes from fruit flies. Okay, but these are both light microscopes. There's lots of different ways you can use them, like use different dyes 
to have the different parts of the stell stain different colors or different fluorescent dyes like this one that's being used on the screen right now it's making the chromosomes glow blue okay um or using different types of light so full spectrum white light versus a filter that uses only a certain wavelengths of light versus a laser beam for your light source but they are all light microscopes light is passing through the cells passing through that clear series of glass lenses to make the object look bigger than it really is that's a light microscope now like i said light microscopes magnify things up to a thousand fold make them look up to a thousand times bigger than they really are and then that's a limit for a light microscope just based upon the wavelengths of the light itself okay and resolution the distance between objects light can't be used to make things look more than a thousand times bigger than they really are now some things inside cells are too small to be able to see with a light microscope Okay. For example, a ribosome that we're going to learn about later today. You can't see with a light microscope. It's too small to see. Okay. Proteins, you can't see with a light microscope. In that case, you might use an electron microscope instead to look at these things. Now, electron microscope, the concept is very similar to a light microscope. So remember, a light microscope, light comes up, passes through your cells, then passes through a series of glass lenses to get to your eyes, and those glass lenses refract the light, they bend the light, and make the image look bigger than it really is. Okay, electron microscope, similar concept. Except instead of a beam of light that's passing through your cells, it's a beam of electrons. The electron beam passes through your cells, and then you need to focus that electron beam just like you focus a light beam, but you can't focus electrons with glass lenses. So instead, what you're going to use is electromagnets to focus the electron beam. Okay, same basic concept. Now, with electron microscopes, there's two different types. Okay, one type is called a TEM or transmission electron microscope, and that's one I basically just described. Okay, the electron beam passes through the cells. So an electron, a transmission electron microscope lets you see inside cells. For example, this image here on the screen, that's a TEM image of muscle cells from humans. So you can see inside muscle cells to see their structure. And then this image here that's next to it, that's an, a transmission electron microscope. As you can see, it's a very large instrument. It's obviously a lot more complicated than most light microscopes. Okay, the other type of microscope you would use is a scanning electron microscope. A scanning electron microscope doesn't pass through cells. Instead, it scans across the surface of things. Okay, so for example, if you wanted to look at the structure of the surface of a virus, or as this image here, the Drosophila. Remember earlier I showed you an image of fruit fly eyes using a light microscope? Well, here's a Drosophila using a scan electron microscope. And then you can see in this other image, if you take this compound eye of Drosophila and under the electron microscope blow it up even more, you can see how it's made up of these little facets and actually has little hairs growing out of it. Okay, so that's an electron microscope, a scanning electron microscope. Obviously, you can see in much greater detail than you can with a light microscope. Now, in the course you're taking right now, you're not going to be using an electron microscope. Uh, Valencia College does not own an electron microscope. They cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, and they take a small room like this one here, like the size of the closet, to fit them in. So we don't have them. But if you want to go on, go on to you, your next university after this, um, they will have electron microscopes, and you can take a course. You'll probably take a whole course to learn how to use one. They're a lot more complicated than light microscopes. Like when I was in graduate school, for my PhD, I took a whole class to learn how to use electron microscopes to take images of fruit flies, kind of like this. Okay, so that's a really quick rundown of your introduction to microscopes. Now, we're also going to do a lab that's actually going to teach you more details about microscopes. So that's a brief introduction to microscopes.